Hey, what's happening, guys? We're taking a look here again at the Elecro Raspberry Pi Pico Advanced Kit. And as you can see, they're sitting on the kit. I got a little something whipped up. It's a project from their uh, their project guide. And I thought this one was kind of easy enough for anybody to do as a first project. Yet it's still interesting enough to hold your attention other than, you know, this is how you light up an LED. So what we got here is simply an infrared sensor. They call it, I think, human presence detector. You have our infrared sensor here and a tricolor LED there. So let's uh, jump over to the computer, take a look at the information they provided for this project, then we'll show you how I built it. Okay, here we are looking at the... Uh their project guide manual, whatever you want to call it, you can download with the kit. And if we scroll down through here, you can see they give you a little bit of information about the Pi, including this diagram here, which is going to be extremely useful since they didn't print the pin numbers on top. And we'll just roll down here. If I were looking for number seven. So here it is, the human body sensor light. And it says a PIR sensor, a passive infrared sensor, also known as a pyroelectric infrared sensor. The sensor uses infrared light. Yeah, human body, blah, 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 gives off a wavelength. See, I've never heard of this before, the Philippine filter. That's new. Very cool. Always look new, something new. That must be what this uh, white plastic thing here is on top, because there is the actual sensor. Then it gives us our uh, circuit connection diagram from the Pi, which is a 3.3 volt device. We're going to go to the positive of the PIR sensor. From the ground on the Pi, we're going to go to the negative. And from GP0, we're going to go to the out on the sensor. And then for our RGB LED, which is a uh, common cathode, our grounds go to ground. GP2 goes to red, GP3 goes to green, and GP4 goes to blue. So that's all pretty simple. And then we have our code here. From machine, we're going to import pin and PWM. From U time, we're going to import sleep. And then we're going to call PIR is equal to pin 0. Remember, we set it as GPIO 0, pin in, and it has to have a pull down on it. Then we have LEDR will be on PWM pin 2, green will be on PWM pin 3, and blue will be on PWM pin 4. Our PWM frequencies are 2000 hertz apiece. Then we're going to say if the name is equal to main, that's what's going on here. Then while that is true, we're going to print a PIR value. If the PIR value is equal to 1, then we're going to turn them on. Otherwise, we turn them off. That's all there is to it. They stay on for uh, three seconds. So let's go build it. All right. So, like I said, I think this is a pretty simple project that just about anybody could do for a first project. And everything that you see here that we need to do the project is out of the kit. And I'll put a link to that down below. So kind of the way they have it shown in the manual, we have the pie on the breadboard with the uh, USB facing left. And then we have our uh, PIR sensor kind of up here and our RGB LED down here. Something like that. It doesn't really matter. So, the first thing it's just telling us to do is how to hook up the PIR sensor. And it says that we need 3.3 uh, volts to go from the Pi to the sensor. And like I said, nothing is printed on there. So, you have to look and say 3.3 volts out is pin 36. So, we'll have to count down. Forty, thirty-nine, thirty-eight, thirty-seven, thirty-six. 
and we'll run that to the positive rail and then we will take our positive pin here which is the middle one and that's also going to go to the positive rail like that and then we have our negative rail which is pin number 38 so 40 39 38 that goes to the negative rail and then hook up our ground from the PIR sensor to the negative rail yes you could have hooked these into the Pi itself but it's good practice to get used to running your power into the rails. So then we have the out, which is that one there. And it goes to GPI 0, which is pin number 1 over here on this side. Like so. Now we have to run the ground which is this one all the way on the left to our ground rail like so and then our red goes to GPI 2 which is pin number 4 1 2 3 4 then our green goes to the next one <laughs> which is pin 5 and our blue Just like that. That should take care of the wiring. Now we can go do the code. All right, we are back over at the computer. We're gonna put our code in. So the first thing I have to do is hook up our Pi. We'll see if it finds it. There we go. And there's the code, which I've already typed in. Um, you notice this is going to be different from the C type code that we're used to when dealing with the Arduino. There are no semicolons at the end of this. And while everything can be put wherever you want, you know, with wise on the screen or whatever with the Arduino with this, the indents are important because they're telling it, you know, what to do. So we're saying here's our main loop thing while true. We're going to do these. So it has to be lined up like that or it just won't work. Also, you must name it main.py if you want it to run every time it's plugged in. If you don't do that, you know, if you give it another name like uh, pirsensor.py, you will have to launch this IDE which is called Thawney and um, run it by clicking the run button here like that and that's the way that works so there you go we put it all together and does it still work yes it does like I said this is a really nice and easy project you know, if you want to get into learning the Raspberry Pi Pico and its whole infrastructure and ecosystem, this is an easy project to get into. Everything is included in this $40 kit from Elecro. It was a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, yesterday, um, 
Queen Elizabeth passed away. I have to at least acknowledge that here. She is the only uh, monarch probably most of us have known in the, in the uh, British Empire for all of our lives. And now things are going to be different. So good luck to King Charles III. Those are large shoes he has to fill. That's it. I'm out. Peace.